Good morning. Welcome to Immaculate Heart of Mary Catholic Church. Today is the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, and the readings and responsorial psalm may be found in your red worship, 1174. That's 1174. Please join in our opening hymn found in the Blue Gather, 373, Sing of the Lord's Goodness. That's 373. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let us humbly call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire, and gloomy darkness, and storm, and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words, such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion, and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man and then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's first reading and Gospel very much emphasize this need, the importance of humility. And if we look at the lives of the saints, all of them proclaim, whether it's by the word or simply by their example, proclaim that in order to grow in holiness, in order to draw closer to God, humility is absolutely essential. But I think perhaps I'd like to suggest all of us probably have, a, have had some kind of a negative experience with humility, probably because of a wrong understanding of what it is or someone trying to live it but getting it all wrong or maybe even we ourselves have, have tried to embrace it. So just to say first, humility is not self-hatred and humility is not false modesty. We all, when, whenever we see that, you know, we get that sick feeling in our stomach and we know it, it's not real, there's something off about it, something wrong about it. But real humility is about admitting the truth of embracing the real worth of who our neighbor is, but also embracing the truth about who we are. And the mystery of it that we are meant to live into, especially as Christians, is that our Christian lives reveal things about who we are that sometimes the world forgets about. And so sometimes the Christian humility starts looking a little bit different to the world, but we, we know it to be true. And I, I want to talk a little bit about that, what that humility, a part of what that humility looks like today. But I want to speak about it by way of St. Francis, who, of course, all of the saints, they were all very humble. But St. Francis, in a real way, is, is, has been lifted up as one of the most humble or, or kind of just a, a great image of what it means to look, to be humble. And he, he would often give this phrase, and this is the phrase that I, uh, this prayer, and this is the prayer I want to lead into today. As he went about his life, he would pray to God, God, show me who you are and reveal to me who I am. It's a very simple prayer, but it's a beautiful prayer and it reveals so much. First thing to notice is to see that it actually, it's a prayer for humility, even though he's not asking for humility directly, 
because he's asking for truth. Show me who you are, God, and show me who I am. The other thing that it's clearly admitting is something that is also very true, that he doesn't know everything about himself. There's more to be revealed, and there's someone who does know the more. That's God who is looking at him. That's humble. I think all of us would, would admit it, you know, uh, for a brief looking inward. I don't know everything about myself. And that's true, and it's important for us to embrace. We're a lot more mysterious than we, than we, than we know. There's, there's a lot in us even that's, in a way, outside of our control. And so Francis is asking God, show me who you are and show me who I am. What's wonderful to see, of course, it's in the life of St. Francis and in all the saints, and I think we know it too, when we begin to see who God really is and how good God really is, we start to see how deeply loved we are. That's a starting place for us as Christians. And you know, sometimes people think, well, that's kind of mushy Christianity. <laughs> But it's not because it is the hard truth of God's love, his eternal love that is so true and rock solid, that when that shines in our life, there's a whole lot more truth that begins to be revealed, especially in each one of us. And sometimes it's a painful truth. It's that truth, we haven't lived up to that goodness. And so, sometimes that's why we want to say, stop loving me so much, God. It, it's hurting too much. Uh, you can't love me that much. You see how bad I am. But the truth is, his love is real, and we're meant to stay there and to, to, to remain in that love because that is who he is. And he reveals, and it, who, his love for us is meant to have deep challenge to us. But he loves us, and we're meant to stay there. But the other truth, of course, when we are in that love is, is how sinful we are. And that's a gift. And I'm going to say it one more time. And when we discover that, that is a gift. How when we discover our sinfulness, whatever it might be, maybe it's our greed, our, our pride, our, our selfishness, our, our, our lust, our anger, our fear, whatever it is that, that our weaknesses that arise. And sometimes, of course, when, when we see our weaknesses, it conflicts with how we have always viewed ourselves. I'm a good person. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it comes up like, well, I'm not as good as I thought I was. And sometimes that, that causes reactions. Well, it's, it's their fault. Or we want to look, or we want to gussy ourselves up and prove to God, no, well, this is how I really am. It, and can't you see this God? This is, this is who I really am. And both of those are, in a way, our pride that are reacting, you know, that, that tells us we're more important than we really think we are, or we're better than we are. And of course, there's, there is something that we can do about our sin. There's ways that we can work against it powerfully. But in our humility, what's meant to happen is we're meant to come before God in our weaknesses and remember he is still loving us even when we're when we are broken even when we are messed up beyond what we imagine in fact many of the saints speak about that that the, the closer they grow to god they don't see less sin in their life although other people might see less sin in their life their eyes are mo opened more deeply. I am a greater sinner than I ever imagined. But what happens is they, they grow in learning and abandoning to the one who is loving them, even in their messed upness, if that's a word. <laughs> They're being screwed up, being the, the, the darkness that is in their life. And, it, and that is a, a truth that we also are meant to embrace that we can't fix on our own all of our weaknesses. And we have a God who wants 
to be a father for us, who desires to love through us, who desires to supply the need that we are so desperately in need of. Sometimes I'll hear people say, like, no, no, God, you, you've loved me enough already, implying, you know, I, I got this. But that's not how it works. Our growth in God means we have to allow him to love us, even in our weaknesses. The more we accept that, that truth, so it, began, it begins with, with being in God's love, which arises for us, the reality of our sin, but then leaning again into his love, his mercy and forgiveness, so that we can rely even more deeply on him. The more we accept that, it doesn't increase in us false humility, you know, false modesty or self-hatred. It, it engenders in us something that is so beautiful, the deepest peace, because we know, yes, there's something wrong with us, but God loves us, and our, all of our needs are being supplied for. It fills us with joy because we're coming to taste and know God even more deeply, even in spite of ourselves. God is choosing to live through us. It's a, it's a wonder to experience more deeply. And that's the invitation for us, but it's through this gift of humility admitting the truth of who we are. Again, it's not self-hatred or, or false humility, but it's admitting the truth of who we are before God and who God is, how good he is. It also places us lower in our minds. <laughs> how we imagine at times, I'm not accusing anybody, but it's the, the nature of humanity many times, how we imagine in our mind our superiority over others, but it brings us lower to be with everyone else, deeply in need with God, and we start to see others even more fully as really our brothers and our sisters who have one Father who is supplying our need. And so the invitation is to live out of that, to love them, with the same kind of reverence, with the reverence that God treats our own brokenness, that we can treat others in the same way. That's humility, and it is so, it, it tastes, when it is embraced, it tastes so good. Even though it hurts, it hurts our pride, but it tastes so good because it is so life-giving. It fills us with God, and he desires to fill us more deeply. So we're, we're invited today to embrace the truth, the Christian truth of who we are. And so we pray with St. Francis today, God, you show me who you are, which is his love, his mercy, his eternal truth, but also reveal to me who I am in your sight. Let's stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our Father, let us turn to him with our needs. That we may be a welcoming church, making people of all backgrounds, all cultures, all histories, and all walks of life feel welcome in this one body of Christ. We pray. For our country's leaders, that they may be inspired to invite those who have difficulty paying their bills or putting food on the table to move up to a higher position at the banquet of life. We pray. For all those returning to school this fall, especially our regional school, Notre Dame Academy, that they may embark upon a new school year renewed in the appreciation of curiosity and the joy of learning. We pray. That we may care for all of God's creation as we care for all those that we love so that our world and our environment may be sustained for generations as numerous as Abraham and Sarah's, we pray. For those who suffer in the heat of summer, especially those who are homeless or cannot afford adequate cooling, we pray. That we may be a home for the poor as we sing in today's responsorial psalm, extending God's generosity to all those in need, we pray. For the special intentions in our parish, for those who are sick or homebound, especially Marty Cook, Emmett Dennehy, and Marie Morlot, sister of Vivian Pritchard. For those who have died, especially Jimmy Quinn, brother of Mary Ellen McGannon, Michael Quinn, Verna McCabe, and Louis Quinn. And for the people of the parish, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray. Generous God, you look with favor on your humble people. Listen to our prayers, which we offer with humility and contrition, and grant them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are being prepared, Please join in singing out of your Red Worship Hymn Book, 737, If Life is Like a Wedding Feast. That's 737. Check 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, 
and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we approach God's table, please join in singing out of your Blue Gather Hymn Book, 417, We Remember, that's 417. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have a, a few announcements this morning. First, I'm excited to announce that we have hired a new pastoral minister, Denise Sylvester. So many of us know Denise. She's been deeply involved parishioner for many years. She brings with her a profoundly kind, compassionate, energetic, and creative heart, as well as all of the gifts needed to be a pastoral minister. I'm so happy she's a part of our staff. So if you do see her, please welcome her as well. It was also great to see so many here for our, uh, for our pig roast. It was a great time for everyone except for the pig. But it was, <laughs> but it was, it was awesome to see, it, it was awesome to see the, the, the whole gym and the cafeteria filled and it was great to see everyone there as well. Um, so I just wanna say thank you for, for everyone coming. Also, our ministry fair is coming up in just a couple of weeks. So that's a time to consider for, for all of us, to consider for yourselves ways that you'd like to become a little bit more involved. I know many of us here are already very deeply involved, but maybe there's a way that some of us would like to become more involved. And I'd like to, think it, like to invite you to think of how you'd like to be more involved socially, or perhaps to engage more deeply with your faith, or to engage in service. All three of those are really important in the life of a parish. So I'd like to invite you to, to think about ways you'd like to do that. Our parish offers many ways. So that, that'll be coming up in a couple of weeks to, to, to put on display all that is offered here. Registration for confirmation, first reconciliation, first communion, and religious education is now open. Religious registration can be found on the front page of our parish website. Please see the bulletin for more details. Also, our Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults is going to be beginning in October. So that's the way that we as a parish community welcome in those who would like to become Catholic or those who would like to become confirmed. So if there's someone in your life that you know who perhaps has not yet been confirmed but would like to be, or someone who would like to become a little bit closer to become a part of our Catholic family, please invite them. They can either contact me or you can a ask me, and I would love to contact them. So either way, it's a great way that we can invite people to become a part of our family more deeply. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. As we ready ourselves to go, Please join in singing out of your blue gather 529, Let There Be Peace on Earth. That's 529.